Hey there, um, welcome back to another video. Um, this is EO Rainbow McLean for life once again. And I want to welcome back everyone to another movie review and another discussion of Bruce Willis film. And this time around, I'm going to talk and review this. The Fifth Element came out 1997, uh, May 7 in Cannes in, uh, in Festival in France, which came out 1997. Written and directed by Luc Besson and starring Bruce Willis, Mila Jovovich, Gary Oldman, uh, Chris Tucker, Sir Ian Holm. Um, um, uh, yeah, that, that's the main cast. I don't. Oh, I forgot. And of course, um, Brian James and um, and Tommy Tiny Lister Jr. I think it's Tommy Tiny Lister Jr. in it. And. This is uh, this is the German release, the the Blu-ray cover that I got. Someone sold me, which is the back. But uh, the reason why I didn't review this film sooner was because um, I actually uh, a few months ago someone was selling um, the Fifth Element remastered version. But someone when I tried to buy, to buy it, I was too late. It was already sold. So I used to have a custom cover with Blu-ray and I found someone online who was selling those movies and I asked him if he would sell me The Fifth Element, Too Fast, Too Furious and, and Fast and Furious, the, the second the fourth movie and I barely convinced him that he sent me those three movies and for 7 euros I got this film on Blu-ray and it was worth it because I'm glad that I do have this this cover because it's a poster cover and I do enjoy that. Now, when I checked for 4K on the US and uh, Canada, yes, this movie was released in 4K, but I thought that, that the Americans and the Can Canadians kind of disrespected the cast because I have written Bruce Willis. They didn't even wrote any of the members of the cast. They only just put their faces on it and that's it. And if you watch, this is the German release. If you watch the German release 4K, they actually did almost the the, the original poster, the way, the way it came out on 4K, and they put uh, all three actors in it, Bruce Willis, uh, Mila Jovovich, and uh, Gary Oldman, all three of them. And I'm glad I do have this one on Blu-ray, which is one of my favorite, one of my favorite science fiction films of all time. And one of my all-time favorite Bruce Willis movies, um, and uh, one of my favorite Luke Besson films. Um, but yeah, this is the bag which I do have, which I'm fine, but I'm glad I have this one. This is the German release, the early German release from 2007, um, which, uh, which definitely one of my favorite movies of all time. I do have the bag, you know, this is from the custom cover that I actually, I only keep it back. When I replace the cover, and of course I do have my own disc. That's my own disc, and I do have the German release, which has tons of special features. This is the German release, and I used to have uh, the Fifth Element um, on VHS, but uh, I actually borrowed it uh, to my uh, neighbor, who was also good. My, uh, he was also uh, a good, uh, good friend of mine. But I never got the VHS tape back. I uh, he never uh, returned me. That was like 16 years ago. I I borrowed him and he never returned the VHS. But I used to get the movie on VHS tape. And back in high school, when I was actually in sophomore year in 2005. Um, I actually watched the most for Bruce Willis movies I watched were Die Hard with a Vengeance and the first Die Hard, The Last Boy Scout, this movie, The Fifth Element, and of course Striking Distance. And that's one of the reasons why those movies were my favorite, still are my favorite till this day. But this will be my fourth favorite uh, movie from Bruce Willis that he did. One of his best movies ever. Now, no, no, not just best movie one of the greatest science fiction movies ever and i just enjoyed the film um it was so it was uh, watching the last night i was hooked by this movie i haven't seen it for a long long time but i really do miss bruce willis nowadays like that now he's like 
sleepwalk it through every character to every role like he doesn't give a damn but that time he cared and I miss this kind of movies um, Written directed was by Luc Besson he's a French director uh, for those who don't know who he actually uh, directed La Femme and Nikita from 1990 um, that was such a huge hit that time uh, which was a French film so that Americans they actually went and uh, the US they actually, or probably Canadians, they actually went and developed their own series because there was Le Femme Nikita from back in 1997 till 2001 uh, which the, the, the lead uh, character was played by Pita Wilson I think was she was a Canadian actress, I'm not sure um, then was a reboot which, uh, which was with Maggie Q um, uh, stars uh, as Le Femme Nikita Cause that show I watched, I watched all the episodes cause it was interesting, I prefer more over, over the original. Um, and he also directed Leon the Professional, haven't seen for a long time Leon the Professional, but that movie got a higher score than this movie. Um, Leon the Professional, I like the film, but for Luc Besson I'll actually say The Fifth Element. So get, this movie gets 7.7 .7 on uh, the score on IMDb and gets on Rotten Tomatoes around 71 uh, percent, which uh, it actually kind of deserves it. But this is the fifth element is actually an English language French science fiction action film and definitely one of my all-time favorite Bruce Willis. I had to show this cover because I love Bruce Willis to death, huge fan. Uh, this is my favorite movie he did. Die Hard with Avengers, my favorite movie he did and this will be definitely my fourth favorite film because uh, because the first one is still like I mentioned it, Die Hard with Avengers, second is Die Hard the third one will be still The Last Boy Scout because I love The Last Boy Scout to death, I did a third year anniversary um, and uh, of course the fourth one will definitely be The Fifth Element the fifth one I'll say Sin City, I love Sin City which I'll get to you soon um, but this will be number four and actually this movie is rated PG-13 it, 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 to me it doesn't feel like PG-13 it feels like rated R and I think it should go out a rated R score but that's just me and I love this movie to death I mean I forgot to mention I love this movie to death it's one of my favorite the science fiction movies of all time. I love this movie, and I love I love actually the facts. You know that it starts uh, back in 1914, uh, uh, 1914 in Egypt, and um, and uh, there was like there the, uh, the there are these mechanicals. Um, Mondo Shounds called Mondo Shounds, they are, they are mechanical alien aliens in which uh, this evil is uh, showing up and they actually uh, they actually show in this pyramid pyramids they showed up in the pyramids and uh, uh, and um, there's this priest uh, th there's this guy there's this priest who um, they um, who knows that they're actually friends he knows they are actually uh, they're actually uh, friends. And the great evil is coming to their world, and they uh, they actually have to protect the four stones because this is the only weapon. You know, there are actually four stones: um, air, water, fire, and earth, which are four four magical four stones, which are the only weapon that that, that can uh, defeat uh, this evil that's coming on our planet, and. We have Luke Perry as Billy and uh, another uh, professor architect, archeo archeolo uh, architect who is uh, who is researching the pyramids, and um, I think he gets knocked down. And because Billy makes a chain reaction the, uh, when he fires accidentally with his gun, and he um, closes the door of the. Of the pyramids, um, uh, the the secret of the stones have to be protected. And every five thousand years later, uh, the, the this great evil uh, uh, in the uh, is actually coming on a planet. It's gonna destroy all life itself. So now the year is uh, two thousand um, two thousand two hundred sixty three. 
and actually uh, yeah, it's 2263 because on this cover is right in New York 2259 uh, which is 5000 years but they kind of German they kind of did they didn't uh, wrote correctly um, but uh, yes it's, uh, it's actually now the future um, now it's actually uh, we're actually now in this future and I love the, the world how uh, Luc Besson designed the world you know we're actually in this world we have a flying traffic with, with, uh, with which we see or flying traffic um, the, the cars are flying I just love the, the idea the, the story how, how was designed the special effects um, it was just awesome um, so we actually meet Corbin Dallas and he's actually the, the hero in this movie in the story and um, 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 Corbin Dallas he's a taxi cab driver and uh, uh, and a former special forces major. He's a former special forces major. He lives himself. He tries to survive. Um, and he lives himself. He works as a taxi cab driver. Um, while the great evil once again is actually um, <clears throat> the great evil is showing up on uh, on this uh, on our planet. And the president tries uh, to order his man to destroy this thing, which comes, you know, which uh, uh, which looks like a sun, like a new planet that is threatening our world. His uh, he, uh, Tommy Tiny Lister, he uh, Junior, he orders his man to fire. They fire, but they can't. The uh, and of course the alien creatures, you know, aliens called Montshaus, are the, they carrying on uh, on the ship the only weapon. In capable of defeating the great evil, a collection of four stones representing the classical elements: water, fire, earth, and air. They're four stones, but but uh, actually, a uh, different aliens, a uh, different aliens, Mango Ma Mangalores, a uh, different bad aliens. They actually attack the ship and they go and kill everyone. Everyone who are the only one can save this great evil. They they're only one that can save this great evil. Mondoshaus. One of the Mondoshaus survives, and uh, the humans, uh, the the, sci the human scientist goes and they design in the the the, in the life of a human form, and uh, and that's Lilu, played by Mila Jovovich with her red hair. She's one of those uh, creatures, and uh, she is actually the fifth element. Yes, she is. She's the fifth element. She's the fifth element, and. Uh, when Brio James goes, uh, uh, he goes to try to communicate it with her. She breaks the glass. She breaks the glass. She escapes. Um, and a lot of scene when she, uh, when, when they try, the cast try to rest her. She starts walking around the buildings, and then we see all flying sources, flying, uh, flying ships, and um, and when she stands, you know. And I forgot to mention, um, there's a scene when um, when we actually meet Corbin Dallas, which is actually my favorite character Bruce Willis played. My first favorite character will be John McClane. My second favorite he did will be um, Joe Hellenbeck. This will be my third favorite character Bruce Willis played, Corbin Dallas. And uh, Corbin Dallas, when he wakes up, you know, and I love, love the beautiful music score by Eric Serra, and he... Uh, stands up and um, get dressed and he opens and this guy uh, tries to mock him you know th this guy with a machine gun tries to mock him and says hey, it's uh, it's actually you forgot to put um, the the safety on you know take off the safety you forgot to take a safety safety and I love it uh, Bruce Willis grabs his gun and is this for me and he grabs his gun <laughs> he takes his gun should be safe with me <laughs> or this guy says give me the cash give me the cash <laughs> I love the scene where he grabs the, his uh, his shot his machine gun grabs the gun <laughs> is this for me and he takes the gun and then he flies you know with a taxi at that time when um, when Lilo uh, goes and walks around the, the buildings, she goes and she jumps. And that's the first scene. That's actually a remastered cover. She jumps 
and she lands right on Corbidala's taxi driver uh, and, um, and <laughs> he almost crashed the car as I see you right and she goes but a boom kind of boom you know she she talks the divine uh, divine language which uh, no one understands and and a lot of the scenes when Bruce Willis added the lines you know look uh, lady I speak only two languages English and bad English he added this scenes but those are my favorite lines and uh, a cop shows up and they try to arrest Lilo and he says um uh, he says you better go with he with with, uh, with them and uh, she goes and she reads out and says please help me please help me and at first you know I love when he says when Corbin says uh, just uh, just uh, do whatever they ask you to and then he goes you know he he <laughs> he goes and fucks up and he escapes with the car with with. Uh, with his taxi and this is the scene you know I love the flying scenes you know the when when you have a great car chases when flying cars with taxi and uh, of course uh, when the, the the cops are flying they try to catch her they try to catch um, Corby Dallas and he goes screws them over they they go and fire try to destroy his taxi car uh, his uh, he, he, his car try to destroy almost uh, starts fire at him, but he somehow um, he goes and somehow he um, he goes and somehow he um, uh, he gets lost the pursuers, and when he tries, he goes back home and he tries uh, to take care of the girl and she asks, you know, um, that she needs a priest, um, <clears throat> Cornelius, because she's actually she's hurt, you know, actually was in taxi. So actually, it was a taxi. So because he needs uh, Sir uh, <coughs> um, Sir Ian Holm, who plays, uh, who actually plays uh, Vito Cornelius, the priest, uh, he goes there and um, says, "Hey, um, I need a I, I need a priest." And he says, "No, that's actually um, uh, uh, the weddings are actually uh, are actually the the fourth floor." He says, and he breaks the door and says. Uh, uh, no, uh, this girl, you know, she she needed you, so I bring uh, brought her here, and he looks like, and he finds those uh, those signs, you know, that she's actually the fifth element, and he has to go, and uh, he has to protect her, so he chases away Corbin, and I forgot to mention, Corbin goes and kisses her, and she grabs the gun at him, and says, I just want to do that, I'm sorry, I just want to do that, um, so uh, so uh, Vito uh, so Vito uh, chases Corbin away, and <laughs> I love the scene. Uh, you know when Corbin goes back home and he tells uh, his owner, you know his boss, that his uh, his taxi um, that that uh, the, 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 there was a client that he had to help his client. Um, and uh, I love the scene when he goes and he eats, you know, <laughs> he, he goes and uh, he he eats uh, Chinese. And Mr. Kim, uh, yeah, the, the actor, he was, I think he was in the, the fifth, um, not the fifth, the, the the perfect weapon with Jeff Speakman. I think he was in that movie. Um, he was in Vention Son. He was in many of the movies. He was also Little Weapon 4. Mr. Kim, he's a Chinese and I love the scene when um, um, uh, when uh, when he eats. You know, he asks, uh, he uh, and I forgot to mention, Corbin Dallas has a cat in it. He loves cats. I love that scene. He has a cat. He forgot. Oh, I forgot to buy you a cat. Are you? Are you? Uh, I, he said, I forgot to buy you a food. Uh, uh, do, do you like when I, I give you Chinese? Or he said Korean. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was talking to Mr. Kim, and Mr. Kim said, you know, um, uh, uh, <laughs> he gets, you know, uh, the the letters, and then he says, uh, oh, you are fired. Oh, <laughs> he says, well, at least I want lunch, <laughs> and I love that. Well, at least I want lunch. I love that scene. And um, Brian James, who played um, Brian James, who also played. Uh, major, um, <clears throat> he he also played uh, the major. Um, um, 
General Monroe. He played General Monroe, and he actually had uh, an idea. He actually had a perfect man for the job to get the, those four stones. Uh, we also do have um, there's also uh, this mercenary, um, <clears throat> and that's uh, that's Jan ba Baptiste Emmanuel Zorc. He's actually a, a, a mercenary. Um, He's actually um, um, he's actually uh, he's actually um, he's actually working for the the great evil, and uh, he goes and orders uh, the uh, he goes and orders um, Ma Mangalore's assassins alien assassins to get those four stones, and they went with a briefcase to get the four stones. But actually, you know, <clears throat> actually it was a wrong. The the suitcase was empty. And I actually love the scene when uh, Zork, you know, he shows up the weapons to those bad aliens, to those uh, alien assassins, and he demonstrates what the, what the, the that weapon can do. It has a, a ice cube. It has a fire flame torch out of it. He uses a machine gun. I think it has rocket launcher. So in the exchange that he sells their weapon, you know, Zark sells their weapon, they actually, um, they bring him a, suit, a suitcase, you know, but it's actually, uh, it was, the suitcase was empty. And of course, to Vito Cornelius, um, Lilo, she says that that's empty. So the, the, the stones are actually on this, uh, on this ship. They're actually on this, on this ship. And of course, this girl, um, and of course, uh, little diva, you know, she she uh, the, the, she was the one in the opera. She is the one who uh, hide, hide somewhere, hide somewhere the stones, you know. But so far, no one knows about it. And he demonstrates, you know, to those uh, aliens, you know, what he can do, what what this thing can do, and um, what this thing can do. He demonstrates, and uh, <clears throat> because they bring him as the empty suitcase, he gets pissed. But then he gives him a gun, and I love the scene when the, when one of those aliens <laughs> clicks the button, and he forgot to ask him what what does the red button do. He clicks the button, and the weapon explodes, and you see uh, up close the face from Gary Oldman, and the explosion, which is awesome. You know, we see his face, and um, and I just love that scene, which is a big explosion. So now since Corbin, you know, um, <clears throat> so now Lilo uh, goes to visit Corbin. Actually, um, uh, General Munro goes uh, with his men to visit uh, Corbin because he, uh, because he actually won the, uh, the grand prize, the, the, uh, this, um, this journey on this ship. He, he won the prize, you know, this journey um, on the ship. And uh, the, this uh, soldier, this female soldier will go with him as his wife and he also says no. Then of course Vito and Lilo shows up because they need to go on this ship to get those four stones because it's a race all the time. And um, and of course I love when, uh, when Corbin hides General Monroe into a freezer. He hides them there in the freezer, all three of them. <laughs> it was awesome scene. Eh? Um, and of course, uh, then the cops, you know, shows up and uh, he hides Lilo and um, he hides, uh, the priest, he hides him. And uh, they go and arrest, the cops shows up, arrest uh, Corbin Dallas. They actually got the wrong guy. They actually got the wrong guy, <laughs> Corbin Dallas. So he opens, you know, so uh, he... When he hides Lilo, she's all underwater, <laughs> she's freezing, and uh, Vito is, uh, was under the bed, he opens them, Vito goes, punches him, steals the tickets, and um, he hires his assistant, David, to pretend to be Corbin Dallas, because it's a race against time, um, but, <clears throat> but it was actually... Um, but Corbin then wakes up and uh, he goes, opens the freezer, says, I take the, uh, I says the mission. He goes to the airport, 
um, and David tries to pretend to be Corbin Dallas. He goes, uh, 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 sorry, but my friend, he was just uh, uh, showing my tickets. I'm Corbin Dallas. And then they're like, this life force shows up, you know, and say, I'm Corbin Dallas. I'm Corbin Dallas. They try to get in the board, you know. <laughs> Aliens, uh, twice they try to get in the board. <laughs> there is a scene when... Uh, when Zorg's man is supposed to go to the board as Corbin Dallas, he can't get in and Zorg goes and uh, uh, makes explosion, another, big, big, uh, another big explosion, blows him to pieces, I love that scene. Um, Corbin goes now with Lilo, uh, actually the ship and his ass are not here to amuse, amuse, amuse ourselves, um, uh, we are an important mission. And we also meet when he won the, the uh, when he won this um, the the big the big trip when he won this journey this big trip we see Chris Tucker and I love Chris Tucker many people just like but I love uh, money uh, money talks um, Rush Hour definitely love those two movies and Chris Tucker did a fun job he was awesome he was playing baby he was the host of this uh, of this TV show real realistic uh, reality TV show. And because Corbin Dallas won, he goes and asks him, uh, and he says like two lines, and he says that was terrible. <laughs> and I love when Bruce Willis grabs him and listen, you, <laughs> you can play with someone else. But um, uh, Corbin and uh, and of course Ruby Chris Tucker, they actually get dressed for the. Um, they actually both get dressed. Um, they actually both get dressed for um they actually both get dressed for for the opera because we have the opera scene uh, scenes you know when she sings and that was for real because uh, when we see the the reaction from Bruce Willis that was for real it wasn't scripted it was for real how how the the uh, how she great uh, how um, the diva she sings you know the opera and we also see a scene uh, which uh, a lot of the scenes you know um, which I actually love the scenes when um, Milajovic kicks ass um, and of course um, uh, then uh, we you know she goes and she kicks ass. And um, she gets, uh, she, Zork shows up, you know, fires her, almost kills her. He, um, he steals the, the briefcase, was once again empty. Um, <clears throat> and there's also the, then an action scenes and big explosions. Don't worry, I'll get to you. Um, Lu, uh, um, uh, uh, Bruce Willis, Corbin Dallas, he goes and saves the girl. He goes and he, uh, he goes and he saves the girl. Um. He goes and he uh, he saves the girl and uh, and Ruby and uh, Chris Tucker and Ruby and he goes with the priest and David. They they go to the pyramids, which the great evil those planets and the Triton sliders are showing up and um, and a lot of the scenes when they try to find they find those stones, they put them, uh, they find the, the spot and there are also all elements and when David, you know, he goes. And he does he does like that, you know, and um, that uh, and the wind starts blowing, and there's like a blue light shows up, and uh, they found all the four elements, and um, and a lot of scene when <coughs> when uh, when Ian Holm grabs uh, 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 actually a uh, um, a nerd dirt, you know, a nerd dirt on it. And the it's like a green uh, green statue, you know that green color, and a lot of scene when um when when they also have a water um I think I think that um I think that that Bruce Willis makes with the water water he makes in the element and the the fourth one was um the fire. And I love when Bruce Willis he grabs that fire. Um, now he uh, he actually grabs the fire, and the last match he makes a fire. Now everything's up to Lilo, and um, Lilo is dying. She doesn't want to help because she saw what every how our human uh, humans are destroying each other. But uh, he convinces her that he needs her, and I love beautiful song by Eric Serra. And uh, of course, um, uh, he tells her that he loves her, that he needs her. 
So she opens, you know, she, uh, Bruce Willis and he, she, uh, and Mila Jovovich start screaming. And uh, of course, everything, you know, and now the Great Weapon shows up. She's the fifth element and the Great Weapon shows up and destroys the, this this great evil that's coming up. You know, it uh, goes and destroys this great evil that's coming up. Um, so that was awesome. You know, and by the finale, they both kiss each other. And don't worry, I, I will get to the parts. Um, <clears throat> they actually both go and kiss each other. Now, uh, and then, of course, the movie ends. And I love the song at the end of credits, uh, but I still have to talk about the action sequences that I forgot that I actually didn't mention because I only went to the plot, you know, because the movie then ends because um, Corbin saved Corbin and um, I love that he's a hero that he saved, that he saved uh, our, uh, our planet, that he saved Earth, that he saved everyone. Um, and uh, he he's kissing with with Lilo because he loves her, um, and I just love that it has also romance in it. And the action sequences, uh, don't worry, they're also um, in the opera when um, this uh, this uh, aliens, this bad aliens, you know, these aliens, um, they go and show that and start shooting. They shoot the diva, you know. They actually for the four stones. But actually, uh, uh, they're actually they're actually hidden by the diva. She, they were in her, and Corbin Dallas grabs her out. You know, he tries to save her. She passes away, and he finds the stones. Um, I love that scene. Um, and of course, there's a scene when Mila Jovovich kicks ass. She goes, you know, um, she goes and uh, she fights this guy because she was studying the Bruce Lee martial techniques. She goes, grabs the guy. With both arms and punches right in the chin with her with her sexy leg. Uh, this guy I think uses like a stick looks like a spear. She goes and breaks with his her, her legs the spear. Um, there's this guy grabs her behind. She goes and kicks in the balls, which I love that scene. And I love the scene when the guy keeps fire at her and she makes all those flip sides. The uh, those um, those bags flip sides and she she calls him and she punches him a lot of scene when she goes and kicks everyone's ass a lot of scene you know and <laughs> a lot of scene Bruce Willis every time watches the opera and the diva makes like this it's just like Mila Jovovich uh, makes the same thing it just was it was just awesome it was fantastic in my opinion um and uh, yeah and uh, of course uh, the uh, there's also the scenes, you know, um, when, when when Bruce Willis, you know, he goes like a badass, he is, and the guy, you know, the bad aliens with a gun, and he goes, kicks the guy, brings to the ruby, you know, when he looks for the stones, and ruby accidentally shoots him, I love that scene, eh? and, uh, um, Yeah, and, uh, and uh, I love the scene when Corbin Dallas, you know, he grabs the machine guns, uh, the machine gun, do, 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 shoots all three three aliens, do, 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 throw, he goes, shoots two guys with his gun, do, 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 do. he shoots two guys, throws the weapon, goes, do, 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 do. shoots all those aliens, those bad aliens, and, and they go and the put that, um, they go and the put, <clears throat> <clears throat> um, he goes and shoots the the bad guys. You know, um, he goes. Um, he shoots with a machine gun. You know, three mercenaries. Do, 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 do. I have to go once again because it's a great effect. He shoots the bad guys, kicks ass. He grabs the gun, you know, um, he he goes and grabs the, the, the gun, shoots with a pistol, two mercenaries, and uh, uh, bam, 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 in the, in the left side, he grabs and shoots uh, another, another alien, he shoots, you know, Manglores, um, and Manglores, they are using um, the heavy machine gun, Browning M2HB, shorten it barrel with rockets. 
and of course that will be real because um, the the machine gun you know the browning doesn't have rockets you know but they actually should do the rockets they start firing on on bruce willis and a lot of scene when bruce willis he runs you know with his gun and uh, they fire him with, with machine gun to, 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 try to shoot him he jumps he jumps great effect from bruce willis he slides down this bar uh, he goes and slides in this bar um he runs and jumps um he goes and jumps on this bar um um and of course um there's this bar you know um and of course this this bar is all destroyed um um, of course, uh, this bar is all destroyed. It's all, it's all, it's all like destroyed because the aliens are firing. They're more and more firing. You know, it's all destroyed, and he doesn't have a gun. And he sees this guy Ray. He's a deaf guy, and tells him, um, uh, "Hey Ray, give me the gun. Give me the gun, Ray. Give me the gun, Ray." <laughs> and instead, you know, because he's deaf, he gives him actually um, a, a some pool of cue balls. Uh, and um, he gives him some Q, some uh, some uh, Q, some uh, um, <clears throat> some pool of cue balls and says thanks Ray. <laughs> so he opens, so he goes with his uh, his his arms up and says I'm unarmed, and he jumps and one of the aliens flips in the seal and his head gets attached and Ruby, you know, Chris Tucker grabs the guy, falls down, and. Um, and Bruce Willis, you know, he goes and um, and he starts. Uh, he he goes to the floor, you know. He starts um, shooting. Um, um, he goes, you know, he he goes to the floor. He grabs a machine gun, shoots the 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 aliens, shoots those bad aliens. So again, do, 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 do. Then, then when uh, Chris Tucker is lying on the floor, he goes around him do, 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 uh, and Chris Tucker falls down. He grabs Chris Tucker, um, uh, grabs that sticky bomb, shows the sticky bomb and a great explosion. You know, they both run away, great explosion. And I love when Chris Tucker finds that, that, the, the, that bomb and says, hey, uh, 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 and ask uh, please say, what's this? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's Bobby, that's supposed to be a bomb. They also had the, the bomb detectors, and then he says the line, the bomb detector shows up. And now they both escape, um, now they all four escape, you know. And that time Zorg shows up, and he tries to deactivate the bomb, because everyone abandons the ship, he tries to deactivate the bomb, but the, the, uh, but of course, um, uh, of course, um, <laughs> my, go my glorious go for harder and they blow the ship. And that's actually a great scene in which um, Corbin Dallas and Zark never meet each other. They never, which is interesting. Um, they actually never meet each other, uh, which is very interesting. Um, they actually never uh, meet each other. Um, <clears throat> And yeah, and the, the, when he would throw a sticky bomb, you know, it was actually a big, it was actually um, a big, big uh, it was actually a big explosion, which is really crowd pleasing sequence, you know, uh, those explosions. Um, and Gorby Dallas, he was a special forces, and he knows about these aliens. And when this guy tries to, when the, the leader tries to negotiate, uh, they said that the negotiator, and he goes with a gun. And he shoots them in the head. Great effect. He goes shoots him right in the head, and and, uh, and he knows if uh, the, <coughs> the those aliens without uh, the leader they won't fight. And he shoots him right in the head, which I love that scene. A great sequence. Um, which is great sequence. Um, So yeah, that was also great sequence. And like I said, Bruce Willis kicks a lot of ass. Uh, Mila Jovovich kicks a lot of ass. 
and I actually had a VHS tape which I watched it actually my mom bought it me for Bruce Willis and I watched the film and Mila Jovovich that time I was a huge actually I had a huge crush on her she was so beautiful and so sexy that time but now since ever she started working the Resident Evil movie she, she, came, she keeps getting old and old and she's just she just isn't that much uh, uh, a bombshell like she was back in the 90s anymore. Uh, like, she did six Resident Evil movies and the first two are still uh, good ones. The third one is kind of a rip-off of Mad Max. The fourth one is uh, okay, Time Master. The fifth one kind of sucked. The sixth one is forgettable. She's just that much uh, beautiful girl since ever she's getting married, you know. She just isn't. But yes, Bruce Willis and uh, uh, Mila Jovovich, they both kick ass. Um, and of course, um, and uh, of course, of course, uh, which, yeah, it, which was also Bruce Willis and Gary Oldman, you know, they never meet. Uh, they never uh, share scenes together, which uh, they never share scenes together, it's unique and interesting and fascinated. It was very interesting. Um, Mila Jovovich did, she did, she did excellent job as Lilo, the fifth element, Bruce Willis as the, uh, the cab driver, he was a hero. Um, he did a great job. This is also <clears throat> Luke Besson, he wrote this story about this world. And he wrote the story when he was 16 years old back in high school and uh, his dad was a taxi the taxi cab driver. That's why the reasons why Luke Besson wanted the taxi cab driver would actually be the hero, which, which was dedicated to his dad because his dad did that in order to support him in his art school. And it was always... Um, it actually was always dedicated to his dad, this movie. And in all his movies, he has a, a ta taxi cab driver, which is dedicated in memory of his dad. And Luke Besson did a fascinating direction. I, he did great writing score, a great direction. Um, this was a huge hit that time back in 1907. It was released on May 7, 1997. It was a big, big hit, you know. Um... Um, I love the scene when, uh, when Corbin Dallas slides the, to the bar. The bar gets blown more and more. They lay some fire rockets, which is awesome. I love the scene. Um, it just was awesome. Um, um Yeah, but Bruce Willis does kick a lot of ass. Um, but I will actually wrote, you know, I did a few notes for this film, which probably is gonna be 15 minutes longer. So the the so this movie came in Cannes Film Festival. The budget was 93 million dollars. It cost this movie to make million do 93 million dollars in the budget, you know, to make these special effects, because the effects are awesome. They're great. Uh, the special effects, it was actually the, the sign by, uh, by Mark Stetson. He did a great special effects for the flying cars, which I thought was excellent. I thought was fascinated, interesting. I love the, the flying cars, the, the, I love the, the flying cars, you know, the ship, the, the, the taxi, the, the flying cab cars. I love that. Uh, I love the special effects, which are awesome. Of course, opening weekend in U.S. and Canada earned only seventy million dollars. Grow it grows in U.S. and Canada sixty-three million dollars made worldwide two hundred sixty-three million dollars. Um, and uh, yeah, it was actually two hundred sixty-three million dollars. Now I love the song at the end, um, "Little Light of Love" by Eric Serra, which I'll actually put in my video. Uh, Little Light of Love by Eric Serra. Eric Serra did a fantastic job music score he did he did for this movie Bro uh, um, Golden Eye for my favorite James Bond film in the middle right between Roadhouse and Batman in the middle he did the music score for there Eric Serra was fantastic um, 
Um, it got actually this movie got an Oscar for best effects, sound effects. This movie deserves a more Oscars. I mean, uh, the last word, uh, uh, Jurassic Park two, you know, sequel to Jurassic Park got like one Oscar. Doesn't deserves it, but this movie deserves an Oscar. Um, it only got best effects, sound effects, Titanic. Actually, this movie got like 11 Oscars, but it wasn't that great. This movie, I prefer this movie over The Last Word and Titanic. Yes, from 1997, I prefer this movie. Um, and, of course, um, um, this movie also set in the 23rd uh, century. Corbett Dallas, uh, um, he's actually my favorite character Bruce Willis played. And one of my favorite science fiction films is actually Demolition Man right there. But I think I'll put this movie right with the Demolition Man because um, I'm a huge fan of Sylvester Stallone and Bruce Willis. You now actually Predator 2 would be still my second favorite, but I would say this will be definitely my third favorite science fiction film. My favorite is still Demolition Man, but I got dislike because I said how much I love that movie. I love this movie. It also has a humor, just like Demolition Man. It has a humor. It's fast paced. It's barely it's barely two hours long film. Um, I also love Corbett Dallas weapon like Mangalore headgun Victor P1 his pistol. I love the whole shootouts. Uh, whole shootouts are awesome. Bruce Willis kicks ass there. Um, he shots with a machine gun. Three mercenaries. Um, which I love that. Um, you have explosions, practical effects. I love that. I love them. Um, which that was awesome. Um, <clears throat> So like I already said, Luke Besson wrote the original screenplay when he was in high school, when he was 16 years old. He, he conceived the story of this movie and invented the word of the movie as a child. So he called Escape his only childhood. He began writing the script when he was 16. It was released in theaters and he was 38 years old, um, which was awesome, which was, which was really extraordinary what the director did. Uh, Besson wanted to shoot the film in France. But no suitable facilities could not be found, so filming took place in London and uh, Maugri, uh, Ma, Maurit Mauritania. Um, they were two comic artists who inspired parts of the movie with their, with their books. Casting design was John Paul uh, Gaultier, which I love the costumes for Corbin Dallas, for the aliens, which was awesome. Um, which actually was... Awesome that the flying terrific police uh, police cars, taxi, other vehicles created by visual effects team were were spectacular. The the facts nowadays they're still hold up. They're not dated. They're still hold up. Um, and like I said, Luke, Luke Besson made a hero a taxi driver because his own father worked a second job as a taxi driver. His father did that to support Luke. Going to art school, Luke has a taxi driver in almost all his movies uh, to hire his father, which I thought that was really sweet and nice from the director. Um, and um, yeah, this movie is uh, the, the fifth element, you know, is fun, entertaining, imaginative, you created, unique movie. Um, and the plot is saving about this universe, which uh, which Corby uh, Dallas and Lilo are saving the universe, and it's about saving the universe, which I thought was awesome. It was great. Um, it's uh, just fun, imaginative, entertaining science fiction action film. One of my favorite movies of all time. Um, and uh, of course. Um, uh, Um, 
But Bruce Willis, he did a great job. Um, he actually... Uh, um, Um. Yeah, and uh, like I said, Milajovic kicks ass, Bruce Willis kicks ass, they both kicks ass, Gary Oldman was a fine, uh, slimy car dealership type of a bad guy, he did a great job, I mean, he was awesome as Gary Oldman, and that was really fascinating and unique that they both never met each other, that uh, they never share a screen, the screen states. I think that Gary Oldman uh, doesn't like this film, but he only did it because he was working with the director um, uh, uh, Luke Besson, because he worked on Leo the Professional with him. But it was really interesting because uh, they never share, you know, they actually both... Um, they actually, uh, um, um, yeah, Bruce Willis and Gary Wood, but never met, you know, they never share scenes together, it's unique, and when Corby Dallas grabs Lilo when she's hurt, she escape. Uh, uh, they go to this ship with uh, which is uh, um, uh, the priest um, uh, Vito Cornelius, the uh, the his assistant uh, David and uh, Chris Tucker. They actually they all go to um, they all go to the ship. You know that time Gary Oldman shows up. He meets them and uh, he gets you know uh, he gets blown and because he tries to detonate, they, they activated the bomb. But one of those aliens. Um, one of those alien mercenaries, one of those alien mercenaries, he goes, um, uh, which are actually Margalore, they, they, they anyway blow the ship and Zor gets blown to pieces, great practical effect, great big explosion, I love that, it was great, uh, pleasing, you know, um, <clears throat> crowd pleasing, sequence, really crowd pleasing, it was, Pleasing sequence, which was really great. Um, Chris Tucker as Ruby, the, the 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 show star, he did a great job. I mean, he's a fantastic. I enjoy Chris Tucker. I think he did fine. Many doesn't like him, but I like him a lot. In Rush Hour, in Money Talks, um, with Charlie Sheen, I enjoyed that movie. I watched VHS tape. I uh, I also watched the 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 Rush Hour. I still have that movie. Um, and Chris Tucker did a fine job, and I also thought that Bruce Willis did an awesome job, and I still remember watching this movie in high school, my mom bought me VHS tape, I don't have it anymore, I bought it to my neighbor, but he never returned it, he never returned, but I have this movie now on Blu-ray, which is awesome, and what can I say about the fifth element, I think I already said everything I have to say, I know it's uh, almost uh, one hour long review, uh, but this is one of my favorite science fiction action films of all time with Demolition Man and Predator 2 is right there. Um, and like I said, um, and like I said, um, 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 but, um, but like I said, this movie, I love this movie to death, one of my favorite movies, um, um, um,
But yeah, The Fifth Element is a fun, entertaining, imaginative, created, unique movie. I love the the world, the action sequences, the science fiction, how they did. It's just awesome. This movie, it has humor, but it's awesome. Um, the song on the end, I do love the song on the end. The Little Light of Love, I love the music score by um, Eric Serra, it never bothered me. Um, I love the alien creatures, the designs, the costumes, everything about this film. And also I love the, the quotes, you know, from Bruce Willis. Like, look lady, I only, do, uh, I only speak two, uh, two languages, uh, English and bad English. That's definitely my favorite scene, eh? which, uh, um, you know, when Bruce Willis had liberated the lines, you know, look lady, uh, I only speak two languages, English and bad English. I love that scene, eh? and I also do love, um, I also love his other lines, you know, uh, uh, when, when uh, Mr. King says, you are fired, oh. Well, at least I want lunch. I love that scene there. Eh? Which I love that scene there. Eh? Um, it was just awesome. I think the cast did work. The everything, you know, the director, uh, Luke Besson, he did a fantastic job writing the, the, uh, the, uh, directing this film. And Robert Mark Cayman also wrote, uh, helped to co-wrote the story and the screenplay for the, for the characters. But, Bruce Willis, fantastic job. One of my all-time favorite movies he did. Um, this is how we do a movie. I love this movie. I love this movie to death. But this is the German release, if you're wondering. But yes, I love this movie to death. The Fifth Element, Kicks Ass. One of my favorite science fiction movies. Um, but that's my movie review on The Fifth Element, 1997. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Take care and bye-bye. We'll see you soon. I'm out. Peace.